Today we're going to take a look at the first paragraph of Plutarch's Life of Lycurgus. It is a paragraph that introduces the whole topic of Lycurgus and therefore is really involved in letting us know what we know and what we don't know when it comes to Lycurgus. Let's take a look at this first paragraph. There is so much uncertainty in the accounts which, which historians have left us of Lycurgus, the lawgiver of Sparta, that scarcely anything is asserted by one of them which is not called into question or contradicted by the rest. Their sentiments are quite different as to the family he came of, the voyages he undertook, the place and manner of his death, but most of all when they speak of his laws he made in the commonwealth which he founded. They cannot by any means be brought into an agreement as to which very era in which he lived. For some of them say that he flourished in the time of the, of the Iptis, and that they too jointly contrived the ordinance for the secession of arms during the solemnity of the Olympic Games. Of this opinion was Aristotle. And for confirmation of it, he alleges the inscription upon one of the copper coits used in those sports upon which the name Lycurgus continued uneffaced to his time. But Aristophanes and Ap Apollodorus and other chroniclers, computing the time by the succession of the Spartan kings, pretend to demonstrate that he was much more ancient than the institution of the Olympic Games. Timaeus conjectures that there were two of his name and in diverse times, but that one of them being much more famous than the other, men gave to him the glory of the exploits of both, and the elder of the two, according to him, was not long after Homer, and so are so particular as to say that he had <coughs> seen him. But that he was of great antiquity may be gathered from the passage in Xenophon, where he makes him contemporary with the, the Heraclida. By descent, indeed, the very last of the Spartans were the Heraclida too, but he seems in that place to speak of the first and more immediate successors of Heracles. But notwithstanding this confusion and obscurity, we may endeavor to compose the history of his life, adhering to those statements which are at least which are least co contradicted, and depending upon those authors who are most worthy of credit. We see, first of all, that Lycurgus is connected with the city of Sparta. Lycurgus is the lawgiver of Sparta, the founder of Sparta. So in that way, he's a little bit like the American founders, we could say. Lycurgus was the lawgiver of Sparta, but we will see in the reading later on that the laws he gives go deeper and really uh, than anything that the American founders or contra, uh, constitution makers imagine. So what does this paragraph reveal to us about Lycurgus? Well, first of all, we see that Lycurgus is not someone we know a lot about. There is uncertainty in the accounts which historians have left us of Lycurgus. There is scarcely anything that is asserted by one of them which is not called into question or contradicted by the rest. All that we can agree on is that Lycurgus is the lawgiver of Sparta. And what is the disagreement about? The next sentence kind of lays the groundwork for us. Their sentiments are quite different. That is, the historian's sentiments are quite different as to the family he came of, the voyages he undertook, how he died. So there's a lot of personal details we don't know about uh, Lycurgus. And later on, we even see that we don't know how many Lycurguses there were. But what we do seem to know more about, all of them speak about the laws he made and the commonwealth in which he founded. We may not know a lot about Lycurgus himself, but we do know quite a bit about Sparta. Even though the ruins of Sparta aren't there, we have its laws. We have the memory of Sparta. And from the memory of Sparta, we can infer back about the work or the handiwork of Lycurgus himself. It doesn't matter really where he came from. What matters is the laws that he made. Okay? Now, what do we know about, about Lycurgus? Well, we see this later on. We know that he is of great antiquity, although how ancient he is, we cannot say. And we know that his laws lasted. We know that his laws lasted because of the fame they incurred and the uh, 700 years of uninterrupted self-government that Sparta itself enjoyed. 
So this opening paragraph really lays forward what we know and what we don't know about Lycurgus. We don't know where he came from. We don't know really about his family. We don't know how many Lycurguses there were. But we impute to Lycurgus the founding of Sparta. So that first sentence we see here of Plutarch's life of Lycurgus is really the key sentence. There is a lot of uncertainty about Lycurgus. But Lycurgus is the lawgiver of Sparta. He's almost a mythic or mystical figure. We don't know that much about his family. We can't really say how he did it for sure. We don't know how many there were. But we do know that he gave laws to Sparta. And it is to those laws, after talking a bit about the uncertainty that surrounds um, this figure of Lycurgus, it is to the laws that Plutarch turns. And this should be the focus of the rest of our reading on Lycurgus himself.